Hey guys, uh, how is everybody? Um, we've got a fun little project here today. I'm pretty sure I have everything here to get this done and buttoned up maybe this afternoon. Uh, you guys will probably see it in a couple different videos, I guess. Um, this is Chris's uh, McCulloch 1-10. Hey guys, this is the first of the 10 series you've probably just seen. It's got the McCulloch Harb or the Flatback or the Bullfrog. She has several different names. Um, you guys also know that if you've got that carburetor, um, unless you really, really know somebody that knows somebody, which I don't, uh, a lot of the times you are SOL. Um, unless you're lucky and it works, which this one don't. Um, I just hit you guys. This one's actually pretty rough. If we could locate somebody who knows somebody that has a kit, uh, we would still be SOL. Um, this one, when I assessed the saw to see if it was even repairable, compression did check good on it, but I've not had a look at the piston or cylinder. Um, it will fire on a prime. It wouldn't when I got it here. It had um, ignition issues. Um, the points had to be cleaned, filed back. And then after that, it, you know, I was able to check it out. It would fire and try to run. Um, and I will save all of this stuff and send back with them with the saw. I will send back with the saw. Um, what we've got to do here, he said he would like to keep this as original as possible. It was his grandfather's saw, but he would like to get it back up and running. This ain't a hot rod project. It's not a port project, although I will clean up the exhaust port because I'm sure it's going to look horrible. Um, he does want to convert it over to electronic ignition. I do have a new chip laying here. Um, think I have everything sitting over here in a box to the side. I'm going to try to incorporate steel images in on this when I can. Um, I think I have everything here and it does require changing this lower tank handle assembly or the gas tank assembly and handle and I will send his back with the saw. Um, because it's different to where the carburetor bolts on. Um, the linkages are different. Uh, this actually has a button here for the uh, primer. Try to get all this out of here without blocking the camera view. But like I said, I will send everything back that we have taken off of his saw. It's just something I like to do. Um, you may not want it all back, but we'll put it in the box, send it with me, with the saw. Uh, Chris, if you see this before I ship it out or get a hold of you, um, let me know if you want these old jump parts back. Because if I don't hear from you, I will put it all back in the box and send it with the saw. Um, so it has a rod that works the primer. Um, It'd be cool if someone remanufactured these, but I just don't ever see it. Um, what I meant by we'd be SOL, you guys might be able to see all the corrosion on this thing. The inside of the car looked about the same. Um, she was pretty much a rough customer. Um, got a bucket over here beside of me that I'm gonna put parts in as we're tearing this down. Um, but yeah guys that's kind of the gist of what's going on here um basically we're going to do electronic ignition on this um, i've got the pto side a new crank seal if it needs it it's a hit or miss whether they do or not sometimes you'll pull these down the crank seals still look like new in them i know that sounds crazy but if you do enough of them it probably won't sound crazy um we just hope that everything on it comes off good that's kind of what i'm hoping here um none of this has to come off in any certain order but we are going to completely disassemble the saw in this video 
just to show kind of what's going on here and maybe talk a little bit about these things. Um, this is honestly the first one I've had here that's right hand start. Um, all of mine are left handers. I do have a old, what is that thing? It's a 1 70. <laughs> I get cracked up. People think those are big torque monsters. <laughs> Guys, they are turds, those big hard engine saws. Um, you know, the Super Pros do all right, I guess. The Super Pro 125, but about anything's got to run good once you get up to 125 cc's. But uh, most of the old, like, 87 cc hard engine saws that I've got here, um, completely rebuilt re-ringed they're like a 130 135 psi build they have these big huge crank cases you know they were cord engines um you can kind of get if you know anything about two strokes you can kind of get where i'm going here um, they are not big torque monsters they are they're big turds usually um We've got them here, and I hardly ever get them out and run them. Um, you've got to know how to run them. Um, it's nothing like running a modern saw. It's nothing like running one of these 1010s. Ten um, your chain falling's got to be on point, as well as other things. Um, the old Macs just are what they are. You guys know I have a pretty good collection of old Macs. Um, Unfortunately, I'll probably never own a 125. Uh, the price that they have went up to, unless I have a friend of a friend or a friend of a friend that finds one that somebody just wants to let go cheap or donate, um, <laughs> this old boy will probably never own a Super Pro 125. We do have an 80 and an 81. Um, they're not what some people make them out to be. They're okay running saws. A modern 60cc saw probably, you know, walk all over them pretty easy. Um, I could be pretty wrong on that. I'll probably get hate for it, but um, I'm not talking ported saws. I'm talking uh, bump stock, Super Pro 80 or 81. His video on my channel of both of the two that I own running and cutting, um, they do okay, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, they're not the God's gift everyone makes them out to be and not worth anywhere near the money that these guys make them out to be worth. And that, that's coming from someone that's got a McCullough sign back here and kind of a McCullough enthusiast. Um, they're just fun old saws, guys. Probably don't get lucky enough to be able to pull those out the socket. It's another one of them deals that sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. If you've got a big long wobble extension, you can normally get in there and pull those out, and I might have to find one. Um, depending on how easy they break loose, so we have to get in there with the wrench and break them loose. Sometimes things come apart easy, other times it don't. Guys, I'll just be honest. We try to be honest here. If I run into problems breaking bolts loose, I'm gonna pause you guys till I figure out the best way to break them loose and get them out. Um, just to save on video time, I guess. And we've got a lot of new subs. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you. Hope you hang around. Hope you watch some of our long form content. Uh, I have built a pretty good following on the short side of things. I do really good over there. Um, I was kind of hoping some of the crowd might follow over the long form side, but I get it. You know, it takes a lot less time out of your day to watch a 30 second video or 60 second, however long I make it, as it does opposed to, you know, something like this that, you know, could take anywhere from 20 minutes to half an hour normally if everything comes apart easily and i've got everything laid out 
and I hold my mouth just dry, I can have one of these down and normally 20 minutes or so. Um, this one's pretty old. So far it's not that bad, but uh, sometimes they can be tedious and be a challenge. I'm really wanting to build another custom 10 series for myself. Um, we'll get into that in the future, what I'm wanting to do. Um, I have an old Super Pro 80 that's pretty rough. I've not inspected it to see how the mounts are or anything, but um, I'm really, really thinking about an 82cc and a Pro Mac 1010 chassis for app handlebar. Um, I think that would be one really cool build. Uh, just lightly port it. Um, you know, that's a, what's crazy is it's become a argumentative topic. Um, I really don't want to get into that in this video. That's just something I don't know if we'll discuss or we won't. Um, I'll just tell you, um, if I didn't have this saw here to do, and I hadn't told you what a mess. I may as well leave that in. That should be our intro, I guess. Um, what's that old forest said? Stupid is stupid does. I wouldn't have even thought that this saw had any oil in it. Oh gosh, what a mess. Brief intermission, guys. All right, we're back. And what's funny about this is the whole reason for pulling that cap to get into here normally there's a screw goes in right there um it's, it uses a like a four millimeter hex um or whatever standard size that is um as you can see it ain't there on this one and you may be able to also see this is a manual oiler saw like i said in the beginning um this is the first of the 10 series um there was none made before this that i'm aware of um, it started with the 1-10 um so i'm thinking all we have left to get off is this bottom one there should be a tab right here you have to bend over if you ain't done one of these mccullough used these on a lot of the parts on these saws and it's really a good thing um they probably would have been a lot more cost effective if they just locked tied it to stuff. Um, those things are aggravating, but you know, they do save the saw. Um, they just kind of bend up against the edges of the bolt head, keep it from backing out. Um, it's kind of creative on one point, but it can kind of be a pain in the ass in another sense i guess but um i really ain't wanting to talk porting and other people's opinions but come on guys what else are we going to talk about while we're doing this um and there is a screw back here you can take out um yeah, that's what i thought that was just rubber up in this um i'm pretty sure the handle that i've got might have one if not we'll have to reuse that one um but that'll probably be the next video is um getting all of this um situated out and you know everything back together but we'll probably tear it down clean it up and you know i'll make another part and show i think all i have left to do is this bolt up top here um, it has one of those push tabs up around it as well, but it looked like a really, really tall one on that one. We well, have to pause you guys again. This one looks like it may have something different than what I'm normally used to pulling off. And we got that one out. Um, if you're ever putting one of these back together, you can't quite figure out where the screws go you'll have a long one and a short one that look the same um, i always remember that that short one goes back in the bottom um, in the very early stages of doing this i may or may not have run the screw 
with an 18 volt volt d walt 18 volt d walt impact driver uh completely through a 10 10 cylinder that may or may not have happened um i'm hoping some of the gaskets are saveable reusable um we'll just have to see that was not bad i do have some here um but there's our tank assembly on that one um i will be reusing his fuel cap i think um we'll get to that at a later point in time um next we have our that looks the same as any other 10 series it looks like we do have a gasket intact down on the cylinder box so we'll leave that intact as well um give you guys a look at that tank i just what i'm gonna do is just take a steel shot of it and then when i get to the other one we'll take a steel shot of that and uh we'll put those in here somewhere I'll show you guys those images maybe to where you can see what I'm talking about as to why you can't just do the carburetor swap. I'm sure somebody out there has done it before. Um, I'm sure you could mill out that tank if you had a mill and, you know, maybe drill out the bolt holes and, you know, get it done that way. But um, I guess the next thing we need to do is remove our clutch assembly so this clutch should be keyed it has the poles on it you know just like your flywheel on your left hand start um so it should come off counterclockwise and that it does what i mean by keyed it should have a wood drift key half moon key whatever you want to call it in the clutch itself usually these things will just pull right off but in this sense where it's tapered it has the wood drift key we might have to persuade it a little bit the hammer all right guys another brief intermission um, clutch drum rim sprocket um, i have seen a lot of these spurs on them um, who knows what they actually even came with and then you always have a little washer there uh, there's usually sometimes a fat washer there but um on this particular unit i'm not seeming to see that um, go ahead and pull the flywheel off next i've already had it off so it should come off pretty easy I didn't even think we would need a hammer. Uh, a lot of times if you don't run them to the point where they heat up good and hot, the flywheel usually just pop back off on these 10 series. Or in my case, that's the culprit. Um, I'm not even seeing provisions in that flywheel to where a man could put poles on it. There's not. So that flywheel is just shared completely with the point series saws. I guess what we'll need to do next is get the points box off of it. And we will send that back home with the saw. Should be a flat head. And all of this is good. It did run off of the points, but he said if, you know, if anything, he'd like to convert it over to electronics. So that's kind of what we're going to do. Uh, let's see what holds the uh, condenser on. 
I think it's a flat head. It's not looking very healthy at all. It's usually where I mount my chip. It's like somebody's already been into that. She just boogered up. It wasn't me because I didn't change the condenser. Okay. Um, I got GoPro overheated there. It was weird. Um, I've got it on setting where it should not overheat at all. But I did shut you guys off for another brief intermission. There'll be several of those through this. I don't even really know how I'll put it together. But uh, well, the first night I pulled this saw apart here to get spark on it, I was like, somebody's already been into this. It came apart way too easy. It was nothing in here. It, well, you guys seen how clean it was when I pulled it apart there. Um, I always hate going behind other people and working, but when you look at something this old, it's going to happen. But if I can stop and let it focus, um, I kind of had to use the chisel method to get that out of there. Um, kind of pick it around. She came out. Um, it's very important to get that out of there because that's where I mount the electronic ignition chip. Um, should be a couple more flat heads. I think one head up here and maybe one down here we've got to get out. Um, then this points box will be ready to take off. Well, those both broke loose easy. So if you have one up top, one at the bottom, maybe you can see them. He had asked, you know, if, if I didn't care, you know, if I could do a little video on it. It's the main reason we're doing this. We should just unplug off of the coil. I'm gonna leave that coil on the saw. I'm gonna put this cap back on that for the time being. We'll set it down there in that bucket for now. Like I said I'll send all of that back home with him, but um now we're down to the bare bones of the saw. Like I said, I think I'm going to leave the coil on it. Um, yeah, I'll almost bet that seal's hard as a rock. This seal over here, for some reason, most always is always good. You rarely ever see one that's bad. Um, I have them here if it is, but uh, his muffler was rotten. Just, you know, there's a lot of little things like that with the saw. Um, what we've got to do next is there's four quarter inch headed bolts around the saw. There's one back here that you absolutely have to use a socket to get. You can get a socket on, uh, I'm going to say three out of the four, but this one here you have to get out the wrench. We are back. Uh, the two bottom bolts come out easy, but this one up here is just like most nine times out of ten is a pain in the ass, even if you've got the proper wrench to fit it. Nine times out of ten, she'll slip. Um, I was able to get a really short six point socket in there on it and kind of finagle it out of there, I guess. But what we've got left now, um, I've realized I've not even took the muffler off of it. That's okay. We'll get it here directly. No big deal. Um, that's still kind of mind boggling to me that there's no bolt that goes up through the tank. Um, just something that's a little different, I guess, on this one on a 1010. Probably something only to do with the uh, manual oiler saws. And I know I've got off topic on this and off track a half a dozen times. You'll just have to forgive me for it. Alright. 
that one's actually pretty clean these things are usually really grilly gummed up um, i think a lot of that has to do with uh, you don't want to lose those they are o-ringed um, that I do feed all of the the pulse fed oiler I want to forget my mallet now nah, she's gonna come out um, rings are good piston looks good um, probably a low hour saw um, this is one of those that has the crank seal that and it feels good that actually go, drives into the bearing. Um, trying to get the crank seal off of that. And for you guys that swear that those this saw's never been apart, you can tell by looking at it. See people that say that that has to be spaced out. You just seen me have to wiggle it off of there. Uh, it really doesn't matter. The bearings are inside of that cage. That cage is locked down and set still. You can put that seal completely up against it and it's fine. Uh, sometimes I space them out, sometimes I don't. Um, that seal's hard as a rock. Not as hard as some I've seen. It probably might have ran. It probably would have ran for a little bit, but I would say that once the saw got hot, you'd probably run into a high idle issue. Um, yeah. I do have a muffler cover for this saw. It does look like I'm going to have to pull that because there's one bolt behind there. I've had this muffler cover off already because I had to blow a lot of rust out of there. Um, where you, you can see where it's rotted out. All of that was laying back in the muffler. Um, just something you want to always do. I sure didn't take that loose. So <laughs> it was going to fall out anyway. Um, if it would have ran, it wouldn't have ran long. It definitely would have sucked that back up into the engine. Let's see what kind of carbon detail we've got. Uh, this one is not bad at all. It's got a lot needs cleaned up, but uh, that's what I'm going to do next. Is I'm going to get everything cleaned up, ready to reassemble, and that'll be part two. Uh, reassembly of the saw and hopefully a startup. So till next time, you guys have a good one.